thing. Honorable Finance Minister, to reply. So thank you very much, uh, Chairman, sir. What began as a short duration discussion on the economy, because of the interest which honorable members have shown, have uh, lasted three half days. And uh, 60 honorable members have spoken during this debate. And uh, I'm indeed grateful for the various issues that have been discussed. And, uh, Certainly, some concerns and questions which have been raised, I'll try to address them. So, even as I begin talking about the short duration discussion held in this house, I'm ten tempted to start the discussion from a mention outside the house first. Uh, interestingly, it comes from a member of this house about the economy. Sri Jairam Ramesh had uh, mentioned that uh, in all probability there will be a discussion, something to the extent of saying we've been asking for these debates in the previous sessions, but the government has not been uh, government has not been willing. Uh, we've never been uh, hesitant about talking about the economy. In fact, every time there's been a request to discuss about issues, uh, specific issues related to the economy or the larger one, we've always come in. I thought I'll just draw his attention, other than the usual budget discussions, budget speech discussions, separate from the finance bill, we've always yielded. Economic situation in the country in November 2019 was a discussion held. And similarly, prices of essential items, 2nd August 2022, we had an elaborate discussion. So we've uh, never hesitated to have discussion on the economy. And uh, I thought I'd just uh, sort of uh, put that record straight, sir. Sir, I'd like to begin by speaking about how the Indian economy fares in comparison to what is happening all over the world. Honorable members are aware that uh, our second quarter growth has been very high. Uh, it's the highest in the world, and we continuously maintain that momentum of being the fastest growing economy. Uh, during the same quarter, July to September 23, the third and the fourth largest economies of the world contracted. Sir. Germany contracted by 0.4%, and Japan contracted by 2.1%. The other emerging economies, which are largely credited to be the engine of growth for the world as a whole, uh, even emerging economies such as Vietnam grew by 5.33%, Malaysia by 3%, 3.3%, and Thailand by just about 1.5%. So when you compare all these developments around the world, and for India to have reached 7.6% in the second quarter, is a very significant number that we cannot afford to miss. In just last eight years, sir, India has become the fifth largest economy uh, from being the tenth uh, largest in 2014. So just in these last eight years, we have uh, reached the fifth largest in size. Sir, these... Uh, the activities are all across the economy. It's not as if one sector is doing well and on the back of that, because uh, the temptation is to say that the services sector, particularly given the fact that the uh, service sector in its software services and the newly uh, coming in uh, global capacity centers and uh, so on, gives us the feeling, and also because the contribution of the service sector to the GDP is very high, uh, touching almost 60%, uh, there is a temptation to think, is this growth on the back of only one sector, whereas it's not. All sectors are growing and growing uh, significantly for us to notice it. So because of the Make in India program and also because of the Prime Minister's production-linked incentive schemes, 
the manufacturing sector is also now significantly contributing to the economy. The manufacturing sector has registered the highest growth of 13.9% in quarter two of this year. Now, if that is uh, one other point that we would like to notice, there is this emphasis that I'd like to place on the purchasing manager's index. Manufacturing uh, number itself is 13.9% uh, growing, but the purchasing manufacturers, uh, manufact manager's index uh, in November 23 was 56, which is in the expansionary territory. Now, PMI has been in the expansionary territory for more than 29 consecutive months. So the sustained growth of manufacturing is very indicated by that. Now again, a comparison for the manufacturing sector is comparatively, if you're looking at the major uh, economies, including that of the United States of America, Australia, Eurozone, Brazil, China, and South Korea, they have seen a contractionary manufacturing PMI. Let's not miss this point because all developed countries are all showing in their PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index, a contractionary terrain number. So just to highlight why, what I'm trying to say is we, I've mentioned that 29 consecutive months we have seen the PMI in India <coughs> in the expansionary territory, whereas in those countries, um, USA inclusive, they are in the contractionary trade. Now, I'll just read the October and November 23 numbers. For USA, it is just 50 in October, 49.4 in uh, November, October, and 49.4 in November 2023. Similarly, for Canada, 48.6, 47.7. Australia, 48.2, 47.7. South Korea, 49.8, uh, November 23 is 50. So on, everyone, in fact, the Eurozone collectively, 43.1, 44.3. So on, China's is 50.7 and 49.5. When I bring in China, I know I'm consciously uh, bringing in, knowing that it's a larger economy, we are not matching up to them on many scores. But the index today, this is how it is. They are all in the contractionary territory, whereas we are moving forward. So overall, manufacturing. Now, what about exports? Overall exports in October 2023 rose by 9.43% year on, on year um, to US dollars, 62.26 billions. So um, exports are also showing very clearly a sign to say that in spite of the consumption and also the demand coming down in the Western economies, we are our export is showing a growth. Uh, WTO halved the world's merchandise trade numbers. They said it's going to come down in 2023, and they said it'll come down to 0.8%. India's merchandise exports in the same time has increased, to six point, increased by 6.21%, to 33.57 billion in October. So WTO tells you that everywhere it's going to come down, come down to the level of 0.8%, whereas Indian merchandise export is going up, and it's gone up to 6.21%. Last year, sir, India was the world's second largest mobile manufacturer, mobile phone manufacturer. We've exported $10 billion worth of mobile phones in 22-23. Now, passenger vehicles is a very important. It's not a luxury item. It's a passenger vehicle. Middle class buys them. The export of passenger vehicles and commercial vehicles from India to many countries has increased. PV exports, therefore, increased by 15% to 6.62 lakh units in the year 22-23, compared to 5.77 lakh units in 21-22. Sir, as per the, as per the BC, BCG uh, report, made in India products are now seen increasingly, they're visible in the American supermarkets. Is that an indicator? Maybe not, maybe yes, but we can just gauge what is happening. 
in the American supermarkets, made in India products are now being increasingly seen in the shelves, while US goods imports from China have declined by 10% from 2018 to 2022. They rose by 44% from India during 18 to 20. Decline in 10% from China goods, whereas what we are in, uh, exporting merchandise, goods from India has gone up by 44% to the US. Um, all this is also indicative of the fact that the net direct tax collection is going up. In, uh, till November 9th, 10.60 lakh crore has been collected, 21.82% increase year on year. Uh, GST collection is now almost uh, on a monthly average stabilized at 1.6 uh, lakh crores. Uh, last month alone, it uh, grew by 15%. E-way bills, very, very uh, clear indicator of economy being uh, in a positive territory. E-way bills generation has hit another record, and that is highest record till now, October to 2023. It crossed 10 crores for the first time since its introduction, surpassing the previous high of 9.34 crores in August 2023. So 10 crores in October, e-way bill generation. Uh, CapEx is a very important thing because we from the government for the last three to four years have been increasing the uh, public expenditure on capital asset creation. State's capex also grew in this period. I recognize that. It grew by 74.3% year on year in the quarter ending in the first quarter of 24, FY24. And that is largely because 50-year interest-free loans are being given to the states from the center. And the special, that special assistance, which is 50-year interest-free, sir, uh, we have released 1.3 lakh crores. Uh, we've made a provision of 1.3 lakh crores in the budget of 23-24. So that is also making states spend uh, a lot more in their uh, capital account so that capital expenditure, infrastructure building gets a priority. All this has been recognized by even uh, some of the global media who normally don't write much uh, uh, in appreciation of what is happening in India, but I would like to say that uh, I'm sure the honorable members would have read the Wall Street Journal, s and Ratings, Bloomberg, all of whom, while speaking very well about the Indian economy, sir, refer to the reform measures undertaken by the honorable PM taking his name. I would like to say this. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's efforts, this is quote, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's efforts to outrun China and transform India's economic model into one driven by manufacturing rather than, by, uh, rather than consumption are creating a tailwind for infrastructure and heavy industry companies. So this observation coming from media houses, particularly those who observe the Indian economy at this time, surely gives the feeling that it is all across the board, the development, the uh, uh, kind of buzz which is around the economy. There can always be some points which I'll certainly come to some honorable members raising issue of, you know, it's actually not reaching some parts of the ground, uh, what is not reaching or this is not reaching. I'll come to addressing that. But the point on which all of us can take immense pride is something which I list out very quickly. I'm not going to spend much of our time. Where have we reached the topmost position in the world? Where are we in the second position? Where are we in the third position? I'll just list out those items and we'll know that this is across the board for all of us to feel extremely proud of because this is an achievement the people of India are contributing towards this country. So India is the world's largest producer of milk, largest producer of pulses, dalhan, largest producer of jute, largest producer of sugar, real-time digital payments, largest number happened in India. India is also the second largest, sir. second largest production of rice, of wheat, 
sugar cane, groundnut, vegetables, fruits, cotton, aquaculture, which is inclusive of seaweeds and lotus and so on, uh, uh, and also the marine products. So India is the second largest. Now, ma second largest again, manufacturer of mobile phones, producer of crude steel. Uh, in 2022 alone, sir, India alone registered an increase in production, while Japan, China, Russia, and US all witnessed a drop. They are the major producers. They see a drop in production, and we see uh, not only see a growth, but we've reached the second largest producer status. Coal producer, second largest. Aluminum producer, second largest. And also, India is the second uh, sought after manufacturing destination globally, and this is because of a research which comes from Cushman and Wakefield. So the third position, I'll stop with the third, but then, and also one more on the fourth. Third position, so India has reached the third producer, uh, third position in being uh, the biggest producer of fish and fish products, fish related products. 8% of global produce, uh, production happens here. Startup ecosystem, third largest. Automobile market, third largest. Ph pharmaceutical industry, third largest. Power producer, third largest power producer. Limestone producer, third largest power producer. When I say this, I'm just taking my mind picture back to that one day when the grid collapsed over the western uh, part of the country and we were running short of uh, uh, technology to handle it. And we also had shortfall elsewhere in the country, but no more of that. Today, India is the third largest producer of power. India also has, especially when we're talking of climate and green action and so on, ranks third in forest gain area. India has added 2.66 lakh hectares of forest area every year between 2010 to 2020. So 2010, I'm including 10, 11, 12, 13. It's not as if as often it is alleged oh, for this side of the uh, house. It's always world began in 2014. No, world began also in 2010, and I'm recognizing it. India stands fourth, sir, globally in renewable energy installed capacity. This is a very attractive number, and also to see where our initiatives are giving us tangible results. Renewable energy installed capacity, fourth in wind power capacity, fourth in solar power capacity. And this is something which the uh, uh, REN21 Renewables 2022 Global Status Report recognizes as a big achievement of India. Now, all this is not happening in only the metropolitan cities. Several things have changed in rural India, and as a result of which, our economy is getting the best from the rural area and also from the metropolitan. Purely concentrating on rural India, sir, I want to highlight the numbers between 2014 and 2023, just so that we know the economy is in many ways pulsating in rural areas, and there shouldn't be any apprehension that everything is happening in the urban. Food gain production, <coughs> now naturally. 2014, it was 265 <coughs> MMT. 2023, it's 323.55 million metric tons. Food gain production has had a leap of an increase. Pulses procurement, procurement, 1.52 uh, lakh metric tons in 2014. Today, 82. 0.21 lakh metric tons, 54-fold increase. Gra uh, pulses procurement from the farmers. Milk production, 146.39 million tons in 14, 221.06 million tons in 2023. Ethanol production, which is going to directly benefit the farmers, just as others also, I suppose. Ethanol procurement because you procure it from the farmer directly, 38 crore liters in 2014. Now it is 434 crore liters. Fund allocation, sir, for rural houses. In 2014, it was 66,046 uh, crores. 
in 2014 to 23 totally 2.02 lakh crores, three times increase for rural houses, funds that have been allocated by us. Average annual person days generated under Manrega, that is something of interest for so many honorable members, 208 crore days in 2014, 248 crore days now in 2023. Sir, so, Gram Sadak Yojana, completed road length, 2014, 3.81 lakh kilometers. Now, 6.21 lakh kilometers, 2.40 lakh kilometers have been added on to the total which existed earlier. Agriculture budget, 2013-14, 21,933 crores. Now it's 1,25,036 crores, 5.7-fold increase. MSP payment for wheat, again this and the MSP payment for paddy going directly to the farmer, 2006 to 14, 2.39 lakh crores, whereas what is gone for wheat now between 2014 and 22 is 4.52 lakh crores. The MSP payment for paddy is even more striking. 2006 to 14, 3.09 lakh crores were given for the procurement uh, of MSP uh, payment which were sent to the farmers. Between 2014 and 22, 10.06 lakh crores have gone to the paddy farmers uh, for MSP. So these are indicative that it is not one sector, it is not just the urban areas. The economy in all sides, urban, rural, everywhere, is seeing support from the government in terms of agricultural activities and also other activities, otherwise they wouldn't have reached these kind of milestones. Sir, it's not just the numbers, it's also the way in which some schemes get executed. I want for the sake of honorable members to do a comparison between schemes which existed earlier and schemes that we are implementing and to show how the execution of the schemes are making a difference to the common man's lives. Sir, Jandan Yojana is something which we speak very often for financial inclusion. There was a scheme called Basic Savings Bank Deposit Accounts, a scheme which was launched in 2005. In, uh, in nearly 10 years of that scheme, after being launched in 2005, in 2014, 10 years afterwards, they were 24.3 crore, this basic savings bank deposit bank accounts which were opened. That account which was opened for these poor people had no facility for a debit card, had no overdraft uh, facility, and also no insurance coverage. Suppose this person who gets this account dies in the, uh, after opening the account, there is an insurance payment. None of these provisions existed in that scheme. Whereas under NDA now, Jandan Yojana, which was launched in 2014, and in 10 years, I'm comparing that 10 year, set of 10 years and here 10 years, in December 2023, 51 crore Jandan accounts have been opened. Compare the 24.3 crore, which had no uh, other highlights, whereas here with the highlights. What are the highlights here? KYC have been made easy. Debit cards and UPA pay, UPI payments have been made. 10,000 rupees overdraft without collateral is provided for that account. And accident insurance cover is also provided. So just want to show that looking at a recipient, the beneficiary who lives in the village, who needs financial inclusion, not just opening of an account, but also coverage, and also for him to do his business further with working capital. This scheme and that scheme, I just want to highlight. So in a way, I'm going to call these Nam Ke Vaste scheme, which existed earlier, find life now and actually reach the right kind of target uh, 
uh, in the beneficiary's name. So BS, BD accounts were naam ke vaste. Pension, again naam ke vaste. Launch it, forget it. Swalamban scheme launched in 2010. 2010. In five years, they had 29.42 lakh accounts opened. That is, in 2014, they ended up with only 29.42 accounts. Now, Swalamban scheme is what is Atal Pension Yojana. Launched in 2015, eight years only. And in eight years, I'm comparing that with this. 5.95 crore subscribers have come into this scheme. 20 times more than Swalamban. Again, a Nam K Vastes program brought in and then left where it is. But if you invoke something here, they will say, oh, we've launched it, you don't credit us. <coughs> credit we will, but this is the performance. Jan Aushadi Kendras. Jan Aushadi scheme again was launched in 2008, sir. And in 2014, they had only 80 stores, 80 stores. In 2000, uh, that scheme got continued. December 2023, sir, 10,000 stores have been opened in Jan Aushadi. Where is 10? And where is this? And in the 10,000, now we've said we'll take it further to 25,000. Jan Aushadi. In the Jan Aushadi Kendras, the common people, I go visit Jan Aushadi Kendras and talk to the people who are buying medicines there, check up with them, whether the claim that in many cases, the prices are less by 66%, 72%, 89% in some other, are true or not. And people tell you what they're buying. 1,800 medicines are available, more than that, but I'm rounding it off. 1,800 medicines are available for the common citizen. Blood pressure, fever, seasonal illnesses, sugar, everything. And 2,000 plus equipments are also available there. So, I want to say again, another Nam Ke Vaste scheme, Jan Aushadi scheme, has become meaningful for the common citizen, and this is how far it reaches. Another Nam Ke Vaste, sir, Rashtriya Swastya Bhima Yojana, launched in 2008. It ran five years till 2014. How many BPL families were provided any kind of insurance cover? 3.85 crores. And what was that cover? 30,000 per annum was the cover given. Ayushman Bharat launched in 2018. By two, December 2023, 27.89 crore individuals have been provided health insurance cover, and that is 5 lakh an annum per family. Again, a Nam Ke Vaste. Another Nam Ke Vaste, sir, housing. Indira Awas Yojana launched in 1985. 1985 to 2014, 29 years it ran, sir. 3.25 crore rural houses built. 3.25 rural houses built. PM Awas Yojana launched in 2016, comparable. In eight years, sir, both Grameen and Urban put together we have 3.6 crores of houses built. 29 years, 3.25 crore. Eight years, 3.6 crore households. Naam ke vaste. Now sanitation again, naam ke vaste, one scheme. Nirmal Bharat Abhiyan launched in 2009. Five years till 2014, sir, 38.7% rural sanitation coverage was provided. I remember, I can't see him now, Professor Ram Gopal Yadav, who I respect a lot and who had a lot of, uh, most of the time he intervenes to ask about what's happening in the ground, is there any difference? So his concern, I do take uh, cognizance of his spoke. I want to uh, use this one data, there's also more which I'll use to answer his uh, concern. Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, launched in 2014, now, 2022 data, 95.4% of surveyed houses have access to toilets. 95.4%. Sir, tap water connection. Again, 
A scheme launched in 2019. There's no um, a particular scheme with which I can exactly compare. 3.23 household, 3.23 crore households. That is 16.82 uh, of the total households had tap water con connection in 2019. But when the Jal Jeevan Mission took force. In December 2023, 13.75 household, crore households have been connected with water. That is, we started with 16.82 households, 82 percentage of the total households. Now it is 71 percent of the total households which have got covered. Sir, so LPG gas cylinder, another naam ke baaste. LPG connections were provided under Rajiv Gandhi Gramin LPG Vitaran Yojana. 5.82 lakh beneficiaries were there as of 1st June 2014. And even that is not exactly comparable because there the deposit for getting the cylinder was provided by the oil marketing companies. So really may not be exactly comparable because here cylinder is free, connection is free, and then uh, uh, deposit is not taken. So this Ujwala scheme which has come, sir, 99.8% households have been covered by 2021 itself. Currently, we have 9.8, currently we have about 9.8 crore beneficiaries. Domestic LPG connections, in 2014, sir, totally, inclusive of Ujwala, was 14.5 crore in 2014. Now it is 31.4 crore domestic LPG. Sir, schemes which didn't have an earlier equivalent, I just want to quickly run through to say how section after section of those who are deserving of government policy support have been targeted through specific projects, schemes, and as a result, groundswell is seen. I just want to highlight. And very, very many times people do ask, what happened to farmers? Have you given them? You said you will give double their uh, income, and so on. Such questions get answered in this set of, very quickly I'll highlight, PM Kisan, sir. 11 crore beneficiaries get 6,000 per annum as income support. PM Mudra scheme, where people get collateral free loan to run their small businesses. 44 crore beneficiaries with 25 lakh crore having been dispersed. And in that, 68% are women. Mudra loans. PM Swanidhi, 73 lakh beneficiaries, again 44% are women, and approximately 75% belong to non-general caste groups. PM Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana, 18.58 crore beneficiaries at 1.19 per day, um, that is 436 per year, life insurance of 2 lakhs. At this price, at this premium, they get a 2 lakh insurance, 18.58 crore beneficiaries have got it. PM Suraksha Bhima Yojana, sir, 41.16 crore beneficiaries, beneficiaries have received it. Total permanent disability cover of 2 lakh and partial disability cover of 1 lakh have already been dispersed. I mean, the, this is a cover, but many of them have received it. Stand Up India, sir, loans to 2.08 lakh beneficiaries, rupees 22,000 crore loans have been dispersed. So from the government side, continuously, we are looking at helping people. Now I come to address issues raised by members of parliament, sir, while talking. There was a lot of concern about malnutrition. Member Derek O'Brien, former Finance Minister Chidambaramji, Ami Yagnik, all spoke about malnutrition. So I just want to highlight nutrition 
and sanitation closely linked to each other. Very quickly, 11 crore toilets have been built under Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Gen Aushadi Suvida sanitary pads at one rupee per pad is being distributed. Millet Sastri Anna is being promoted. Enrollment of girls in secondary education has increased from 75% to 79% between 14 and 2021. Institutional deliveries has also shown an improvement from 87% in 2014-15 to 94% in 2021. Percentage of first trimester antenatal care registration has shown improvement from 61% to 73.94% between 14 and 2021. Um, there are also multidimensional poverty-related indicators, which I will very quickly refer to. Uh, member Dr. Sudanshu Trivedi had gone into in great detail about it, so I don't want to take your time on points which have already been covered. But I just want to highlight the National Multidimensional Poverty Index Report of 2022, published by the Niti IO, shows a remarkable decline in the prevalence of multidimensional poverty. Uh, the national MPI has halved from 0 0.117 in 2015 16 to 0 0.066 in 1921. So 13.5 crore Indians have escaped multidimensional poverty between 15 16 to 19 and 21. 13.5 crore Indians. Sir, this actually, this uh, program, the Aspirational Districts Program, I'll refer to it once more later, launched by Honorable Prime Minister in 2018, is a testament to how our government's commitment to the people who are in the far-flung areas, really remote areas, have benefited because of the focus that we've given on to the Aspirational District Program. Just look at health and nutrition, the point on which many members were con uh, concerned. Percentage of pregnant mothers registered in antenatal care. In 2018, it was just 68%. I'm talking about the aspirational districts. In 23, it went up to 89%, sir, 21% improvement. Institutional deliveries, 69% has gone up to 90%. There's a 31% improvement. And also, the uh, PM Jandan Yojana, I mean, um, uh, Jeevan uh, Jyoti Bhima Yojana, seven-fold increase and five-fold increase in Suraksha Bhima Yojana. So my appeal is, Nutrition and nutrition-related issues, health, any case, being both with the center and state, is this something on which all of us will have to work together. Party-driven politics may not help the situation. It can only aggravate. Just as in women's issues, particularly law and order related to women's issues, I keep saying we should not politicize it. Because once you do that, your number versus my number, but the person who's suffering remains wherever she is, wherever he is, particularly in nutrition-related matters. So I, I was tempted to bring in one aspect of how, in what we think, and maybe data also shows, in a state like Kerala, nutrition, education are all very well taken care of. Not, no, no, wait a minute, I didn't complete. I knew you will come back. Now, <laughs> you may not be very pleased with what I'm going to say. Thanks to, uh, thanks to the one generation. Yes. One century old. So, when we don't need to politicize, sir, we can always exchange about the good work done here, the good work done there, and so on, with an understanding that all of us will have to work together for taking it further for better days. But if you are so concerned about nutrition under Modi, that's why it's bad, I'd like to say not very long back in 2018, there was this very sensational case from Kerala of a tribal young man begging for food and was killed, Madhu. 
So politicizing doesn't help. I don't want to say more on it, but I have the proof, sir. I'm not, uh, it's not a fictional or it's not a story that I'm creating here, but that's truth here. Yeah, yeah, I'm also coming up with the data. And that's why I want to say, let's not politicize issues of women, nutrition, education. It's a subject where both center and state has responsibility. If Modi has not given money, you ask me, but Modi has not stopped you from giving nutrition to your own tribal people. Madhu wouldn't have died if that literate and very respected state, God's own country, which I love a lot, which I respect a lot, wouldn't have died if that state had taken care of it. So, that's okay. One mother, that is why I'm saying no point in politicizing. All right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. All of you all had your turn to speak. Let me reply now. Sir, member is not here. Normal rule earlier used to be don't reply to members who are not here. I'm not sure whether I should do it, whether I should stick to that, but it is a very important point. Honorable Finance Minister, Sir? some of the members have sought my leave. That on account of a commitment, they will not be here. That's fine. So response needs to be imparted. Response? Uh, needs to be imparted. Imparted. Because Thank the honorable members, in all fairness, have sought my leave that they would That's not fine. be able to be here. And therefore, I'm sure Thank that you is required. Much. Thank you. I just want to highlight that Honorable Member Derek Cobrian had mentioned elections are won and lost. You win, we win, you lose, we lose. Let's compare equals. He said, our growth, your growth. But I want to say that comparison, elections are won, elections are lost. So you and us, and also the point that we have not won against them was underlined. Yes, of course, we have not won against them. But the point is very grave here, which I want to highlight. You may win an election, we may win an election. What follows soon after? is a law and order issue. And that's where you are certainly not equal to us. You win an election being an incumbent, sitting in power, win an election, and after that, lawlessness, mayhem, clashes, sexual assault, brazen murders have happened in uh, West Bengal. And they're not my words. High Court, Calcutta High Court has said, sir, and I'm quoting, in 60% of the cases, FIRs were not registered. Therefore, total cases of violence understated, unquote. This is the Calcutta High Court's observation. So what is the comparison? I win, you win. We all win means my cadres, ordinary yeah. citizens are risk at, the, yeah. at risk. They get raped, they get murdered, their houses get burnt. So don't you compare. Don't you Honorable, compare. Honorable Finance Minister, Stop. Honorable Finance Minister, we lay the High Court judgment on the table. Sir? You will authenticate the High Court judgment. Of course I will, sir. Please. Of course I will. Thank you. Sir, the incidents are such worrisome incidents, sir. So this very house, which periodically talks about women's welfare, women's law and order related issues, that is where I start telling, if we start politicizing women's issues, malnutrition, and about children, there is no end. I can point a finger, they can point a finger, no end to it. But look at the gravity. 4th May 2021, 60-year-old woman was gang raped in Kejuri in front of her six-year-old grandson while her daughter-in-law was beaten up. So you win, I win, sir? You win and I win? May 21st. May 21st. Uh, I don't mind, I'll hear. Sir, I'm, I, I'm happy to sit down. I can happily sit down. Ma'am, I'm responding to you. I'll sit down. 
But if the issues have been raised by members, I am duty bound to give an answer. I quite welcome you telling anything to me. Oh, this is not economy. Oh, this is not the discussion. Oh, this is not on jobs. I will talk about it because the comparison came from your end. I will respond to it. Yes. Sir, 5th May 21, Arup Das, a BJP Karyakarta, a resident of Natra village in Indus, was found hanging from a tree. Who did it? Till now. And out of the court. Aha. Uh -huh. Calcutta High Court again, sir, comes to my rescue. I will give you the statement authenticated. I am quoting here, sir. Out of 268 FIRs, sir, I heard all members speak. Honorable Finance Minister. Honorable Finance Minister. Out of Honorable I'm quoting, sir. Out Honorable of Finance Minister. FIRs. <coughs> Honorable Finance oh. Minister. Honorable Members, I have already directed the Honorable Finance Minister that the references she has made about High Court observations in judicial orders she will authenticate and not only authenticate reporting of those judgments, but put on the table of the House the judgment. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, quoting again, sir. 19th August 2021, the High Court of Calcutta observed, quote, out of 268 FIRs claimed to be registered by the police Suomoto, copies of only 219 could be found. It is evident, it is evident that 62 FIRs were registered up to May 5, 2021, whereas 157 FIRs were registered from May 6, 2021 onwards. Some of these were registered immediately after the offence was committed, whereas in many of these FIRs were registered belatedly. Unquote. So the last point on this, the last point on this, on 6 May 2021, MOS Murli Dharan and his convoy was attacked. Not even a central minister is safe. So, so you win, I win, doesn't work. Doesn't work at all. Sir, sir, I'll come to responding to some of the observation made by honorable former finance minister. And if you'll allow me, if you'll indulge me with a light-hearted uh, banter, if I may use. Honorable chair has already ordered me. I ordered. There is already a direction. Yes, and I'll look into it after I go through it. Please. Ma'am, you were, you were saying something in light-hearted manner. Sir, if you'll indulge Please do me. that. We need it. Sorry? Light-hearted no, comment. Sir. sir. I'm very... Serious. <laughs> sir, it was a bit surprising, sir. It was a bit surprising and it was also uncharacteristic, I would say, to see the former finance minister, who's very senior, highly educated, was in the prestigious Harvard University even in 1968 when I was in primary school. But he wholeheartedly concurred and sort of piggyback rode on the arguments provided by Derek O'Brien. He took his name more than three, four times. I, oh, hang on. I've sought the permission of the House. The honorable members here, with respect, I'm giving my observation. There's no other way in which 
a lighthearted observation can be accommodated. I started thinking, was it an attempt to placate the All India Trinamool Con 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 Congress to come and attend the dot, dot, dot alliance because they seem to be hot and cold? What is it? I didn't understand because much before you could come to talking about the economy, that happened. And I said, oh my God, now this is all between uh, All India Trinamool Congress and Congress. The dotted alliance needs them and they seem to be one second, hot one and second. cold. Take your ticket. Oh. I had the occasion to make a reference to Dr. Derek, Mr. Derek O'Brien's name on three occasions. And we had a very quick comment from Jairam Ramesh. Is something cooking? Something like that you said? Am I right, Jairam? When I took the name of Derek O'Brien three times on a particular day, the record shows it, you made a comment. Similar kind of comment. Was me. Sir. <laughs> sir, no comparison with you, sir. And, <laughs> so, but sir, so I just want to say, no, come on. I sought his permission for a banter, right? Thank you, thank you. So he made, the former finance minister, made a very linear comparison as to how the GDP has grown from 1991, 92, 25 lakh crore, and then 50 lakh crore, and then uh, 100 lakh crores, and so on, and then wondered if I, I will say that by the end of 23, 24, India will have 100 lakh crore as the GDP. That is, he, if I understood, if I heard him right, he said going by the trend of doubling every 10 years, it might. So I, I'm confident that the question is asked with a certain sense of confidence that the Indian economy and people are contributing for its growth. But I would only refer to one editorial which appears today in a paper. I'm not saying my view. But if you would permit me, and I also do a authentication and everything else. There is an editorial in the Economic Times today, which says, a four trillion dollar plus we go. GDP expected to catch up in the coming fiscal. And goes to elaborate, and there's just one line that I'll read for the house, for the benefit of the house, and I quote, as India's GDP rises, would the market cap rise in tandem? Though there is no direct correlation, there could be significant wealth effects that provide tailwinds to the economy. Retail investors own 10% of the equity, about $400 billion, and their share has been rising. That should help consumption which accounts for close to 60% of the GDP. So, linking that to the growth of the GDP itself, this write-up, which is an editorial in a paper, which is a pink paper, which observes the Indian economy, we get a picture and a probable answer to the former finance minister. Sir? Then the worker population ratio was also another issue with the honorable former finance minister raised. I just want to highlight, incorrect it was for him to suggest that the worker population ratio has not improved. There is, obviously he's done some kind of a, if you permit me, whimsical calculation there and then, and uh, which serves him well. And the interpretation is not right. As per the PLFS, that is the Periodic Labor Force Survey, WPR, the worker population ratio, that is the share of the employed in the total population, has increased to 56% in 2022-23 from 46.8% in 2017-18. And I underline the fact that this is post-COVID. 
that it has gone up to 56 percent. So there is an increase in the worker population ratio, and this is government's data. So youth unemployment rate, that is the age between 15 to 29, has declined. Unemployment rate has declined to 10 percent in 2022-23 from 17.8 percent in 1718. So there, the unemployment is also declined, while youth LFPR has expanded from 38 percent to 44.5 percent over the same period. So unemployment is coming down. You have the data to show it's also employment is also going up. In fact, sir, WPR in 2005 was 42 percent, which fell to 38.6 percent in 11, 12, 2011, 12. So fall happened then. Then, in, despite a COVID, which is a once-in-a-century pandemic, we have revived the employment, and the data shows that very clearly. And also, sir, the very schemes, various schemes that we have, Mudra or Swanidhi and so on, are promoting <coughs> self-employment, particularly the lower sections of our society. More than 25 lakh crores have been dispersed to over 44 crore mudra accounts. 68% of them are women. They do their own business and probably employ one or two more people there. 73 lakh street vendors have availed of cheap credit under PM Swanidhi program, and even in that, 44% are women. So I think the hard work and the entrepreneurial spirit of the Indian youth who go in for small self-employment cannot be ignored at convenience and cannot be raised saying, oh, the poor are without jobs at some other time. There should be some kind of a alignment. So this was uh, raised by very many members, sir. other than former finance minister, uh, Kanimuri, uh, Dr. Ashok Kumar Mittal, uh, and also Sujit Kumarji, Joe's K. Mani. All of them had raised this issue. So the, then the attempt to bring more employment, self-employment among women is also shown by that, the program that has been recently launched. And I saw with my eyes when I went to the uh, rural areas, particularly with the Bharat, uh, um, Vikasit Bharat Sankalp Yatra, I saw the excitement among women because Namo Dro Drone Didi program is an amazing reception that I saw where the women self-help group women are being picked up based, their, based on their interest to be given 15 days of training to operate drone and subsequently in the 15 days, five days will be also on the field where they will go and test for themselves how to operate it because they can use for spraying of fertilizers, for monitoring the crop health and so on. So they are going to be given drones as well through their, um, through their SHGs. So women are now going to be handling technology-driven drones in the villages to help agricultural activity. And what can be more empowering for the women in the rural areas? Government's idea is to distribute 15,000, provide 15,000 drones uh, to self-help groups and for this, an outlay of 1,261 crores. This scheme is 100% funded by the central government for a period <coughs> between 2024-25 and 25-26. Two years, this scheme will reach all the women in the rural areas so that they're trained and technologically handling this uh, uh, drone. Sir, concern has been expressed about inflation and inflation management. Quite a few members, um, Rajiv Shuklaji, Ashok Mittalji, Derek O'Brien, all raised the issue. Sir, average inflation during 2014-15 up to 2023-24 has only been around 5.5%. Now, since 2014, the retail inflation breached the number and reached the highest point of 7.79 in April 2022. I concede that. But by contrast, of course, because that is important to remind ourselves that between 2004 and 14, 
the average inflation was 8.1%. So I just want this number to be in the back of our minds. And in between 2009 to 14, uh, 2009 to 2014, the average inflation was 10.4%, double digit inflation. So I just want that to be highlighted. We have taken quite a few steps to make sure that uh, I know the Consumer Affairs Minister, the Food Minister, Piyush Goyal, the house, leader of the House, has been on and off releasing pulses, on and off releasing onions from the godown, from the buffer stock. Procurement and distribution of tomatoes and onions are happening as and when there is a need. Imposition of stock limits have been on pulses and wheat. Our trade policy also sees changes so that our buffer is kept safely for ourselves. And import restrictions and quotas have been introduced on specific commodities. More than that, sir, you uh, would recall that the Honorable Prime Minister, uh, before Raksha Bandhan, had brought down the price of cylinders by 200 rupees. And this impacted 9.8 crore Ujwala beneficiaries and who now get 300 rupees subsidy and the cylinder costs 603 rupees only for them. And similarly, it has been mentioned by several people, the PM Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana provides 81.35 crore beneficiaries for the next five years food grains for free. Contrast this, sir, contrast this with those states, which when we reduce the duty on petrol and diesel, did not reduce. And some of those states were lost by those ruling dispensation because it kept the price very high. And I would just recall that uh, Punjab, Rajasthan, where all such states who refused to budge on the contrary, Punjab even raised the price. So, Himachal also. So, these are states which are going against the well-being of the poor, but question us, saying, oh, you're not taking care of the poor. Why wouldn't you want to reduce the price? We have done it three times, and now it's come down to 603 per cylinder, sir. That's right. Sir, and that is why people rejected them. Petrol and diesel being the highest price, sir, you come from Rajasthan and in that state, the price has remained very high. Inflation as a result has been high. No wonder the people have rejected them. <laughs> sir, there were concerns expressed about savings in the economy. Quite a few members had spoken about it. Household savings are also going towards asset creation. I want to bring that dimension in because it's important for us to recognize that when households do have some money in their hand, they also want to invest in assets such as having a own house. Then households added net financial assets of 22.8 lakh crore in the year 21, financial year 2021. Nearly 17.6, 17.0 uh, lakh crores in 22, and 13.8 lakh crores in 23. Uh, this can, of course, be seen in isolation. This is an incremental purchase of an asset for themselves. They are making smarter choices, not just putting it in post office accounts. People are also now investing in the retail market. Retail market consists of small investors who are coming for small shares. And they're doing it on their own, not going through uh, mutual uh, funds. Overall household savings, sir, which includes financial and physical savings, grew at 9.2% CAGR between 13-14 and 21-22. That is eight years it's grown in that kind of a number. The nominal GDP has grown at CAGR 9.65 during the same period. Hence, the household savings has remained constant. It has not come down. But the fact that it is going also 
to, uh, through the stock markets, net uh, unique account, DMAT account opened, are also reaching record numbers. I just want to highlight that the asset and the management uh, of the Indian mutual fund industries, for those who are going through the mutual fund, has grown five times in 10 years from 8.34 lakh crores in October 2013 to 46.71 lakh crores in October 2023. Total DMAT accounts in India, total DMAT accounts in India have crossed 13 crores, the highest ever touched in India. It has increased by almost six times since 2014, when it was only 2.18 crores. It has tripled since the onset of COVID-19, which is a remarkable point to be observed. So there was also a lot of concern about US dollar strengthening against the Indian rupee. Um, I just want to highlight the recent article which has come up, sir. The clearest sign that things are going well, a stable currency, was the title of that article. And it quotes, rupee has lost less than 1% of its value against the US dollar this year. And this is an article which was published in Wall Street Journal, a leading US newspaper, on 28th November. It's not something which is old, 28th November. The title of that article was interesting. It said, virtually everything has gone right for India. And in that it says, rupee has lost, <clears throat> and I quote, rupee has lost less than 1% of its value against the US dollar this year, compared with the decline of more than 3% for the Chinese yuan, a roughly 9% fall in the South African rand, and 11% slide in the Japanese yen. Indian economy is benefiting from reforms put in place by the government of Prime Minister Modi." Unquote. This is Wall Street Journal telling about the Indian rupee versus the US dollar. And I'd like to recall that when once, several months ago, I spoke about the Indian rupee standing up to the dollar and the dollar's value going up, but the rupee not losing value. There was complete mockery at me saying, oh, how can this be? That goes up and you don't come down. Please do read. Then you'll know why the Indian rupee stands stable against an ever-increasing dollar. And that cannot happen unless the Indian economy and its fundamentals are strong. It's not a fiction. It's not a fiction of my imagination. Sir, sir, I will come up to something more on which John Britta's honorable member would have more interest about Kerala. I'll come to that. So reserve some, reserve some energy for that. So the next question was about, the question was about, and this is Dr. Shantanu Sen. I'm not sure he's here, but, oh, he's here, sorry. About why central government sends teams to inquire, why wouldn't we release the funds in time, and also thought that we were against the poor by not releasing the funds. I just want to put some facts on record, sir. A central team was sent for an inquiry on January 22, 2019, to 2019, January 24th, three, four days. They visited about six gram panchayats. I'm just giving you this as one of the examples. This team visited six gram panchayats in four blocks in Purva Bardhman and seven gram panchayats in three blocks of Hooghly district and a total recovery, recovery of 484.27 lakh was reported. 484.27 lakh uh, was reported. Now, the state government after that 
since the correct action taken report, because that was sought from the state. And the action taken report says that the state government had deposited the recoverable amount from the state treasury. However, recovery has not been made in total from each and every defaulter, which is not acceptable. It's a double whammy, if you ask me. Money has gone away from the treasury, God knows to where. And when that is questioned, even by the CAG or by the inquiry teams, quickly that money is made good by putting it from the treasury into the account where it has to go. You're using the taxpayers' money to make good of leakage which has happened. And when the leakage is spotted, that money is not getting recovered. That money is being made good by another set of public uh, taxpayers' money. How good is this? Who's taking away the poor people's money? And when this is questioned, we are accused of not helping the poor. Sir, the action taken further says uh, the action taken, such as FIR, disciplinary action against officials, dismissals, etc., are against very low level, ra uh, low ranking panchayat level officers, and no case against the district level or senior officers has been made. Then, the other kind of thing which got noticed was existing work is getting shown as work done under Mandrega. That work is already done and it is there. You're re-putting it under the Mandrega account. Is it wrong to highlight it? This was double accounting. <clears throat> so, when you question us, saying you've not released money, you're sending teams. The teams are finding all this out. So existing work gets fraudulently shown as work done under Mandrega, and you also, even worse, sir, a state which had a long tenure of communists and who question everything done here should be questioning some things which is happening in Bengal. Private tea estate gets road done under Mandrega, sir. Private property gets work done under Mandrega. Communists couldn't even raise it. And when we raise it, hurry, how can you use Mandrega money for doing a private law, laying of the road in a tea estate which is owned by a large tea estate owner? People call, talk to us about you only benefit one or two big companies. What's this, sir? What is this, sir? So, I want very clearly Correction to be done in favor of the poor. Correction to be done in the name of using public money responsibly. And that is where we've been asking questions. And that is where answers which come don't give you complete answer. So I'm sorry, the teams have come. 19 is when they went. Five years are going to get over. Now you keep asking us without correcting course. Is it wrong, sir, in this house to raise questions about public money? It's our business, all our business, to make sure the money goes to the right people. And that is why Honorable Prime Minister says, adopt technology, use DBT, put it into the account of the common man. Doing that in the first few years, DBT gave us 2 lakh crore advantage in that pilferage was stopped. Adopt such methods rather than continuously pointing to us saying, no, you're not giving money. That is going there in Bengal. They go to the street to say, Modi is not giving money for the poor. Who's not giving money for the poor? Leaked money is getting filled by taxpayers' money. Is that serving the poor? Sir. Cut money. <laughs> Cut Sir, money. again, Professor Ram Gopal Yadav. Sir, Professor Ram Gopal Yadav and also Ajit Kumar Buyan, independent from Assam, have all been talking about private final consumption expenditure in the GDP. I would like to say it stands at 58.5% uh, in 2023, 22, 23, the highest since 2006, 2007. The gross fixed capital formation, the share of the gross fixed capital formation in GDP stood at 34% in 22 23, again, highest since 2013 14.
So per capita income was also a matter on which questions were raised. I just want to say in rupee terms, I'll also give in dollar terms, in rupee terms, per capita GDP at constant price was 78,348 Indian rupees in 2013-14. It has increased to 1,15,746 rupees in 2022-23. Substantial increase in per capita at constant price. If, if any member is interested in knowing about the US dollar uh, rate, uh, per capita income was 1,438 US dollars in 2013-14. It has increased to 2,389 US dollars in 2022-23. So, it's a 5.8% increase. India's rank in the per capita income was 147 out of 189 countries uh, in 2013-14, which has moved, out, moved up to 141st rank. From 147, we've moved up to 141. Sir, it is something which, before I go to talking about Kerala, I just want to highlight the fact that particularly, and recently also we heard the Honorable Prime Minister saying, I'm not worried, I'm not going to be swayed by caste differences, backward, or religion, or any, but for me, there are only four such castes which I will serve now. And I've been serving them, I'll serve them further. And if I do that, across all castes, across all religion, people will get covered. So if you were to touch the poor and serve the poor, poor of all communities, poor of all castes, poor of all religions will get covered. So poor, the farmer, women, and the youth are the four which have been continuously under priority of this government. And this was also taken up from the point of view of aspirational districts, 112 aspirational districts. In other words, they were aspirational for us because they are actually districts, even in a developed state, they could be the pocket which is not so well developed. But instead of calling them backward, we call them aspirational. Such aspirational districts, sir, I just want to say, because quite a few members asked us, no, in the ground level it is not translating. Actually, all the schemes that you are announcing are not reaching the common people. I want to take this as an example to, to, to tell all the members here, sir, that of the 112 aspirational districts, 26 are spread across four states and account for 81 assembly seats in the recently held elections of Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, and Telangana. 26 of the 112 in which complete focus of the government has been there to make sure that also come up to the level of the rest of the developed states. And I'm glad to say that this emphasis of the Honorable Prime Minister on the poor, on the women, on the farmers, and on the youth and supporting them to the last level. Now the aspirational districts have moved over to aspirational blocks. We are taking it further down to mention that saturation of all schemes will be taken up. Common people have recognized this. Women have recognized this. That's why they're enthusiastic about the drone, about you know, the SHG groups getting help. So the enthusiasm is not just there, but it has translated into votes also. I want to just place it before the honorable members that the results show that over two thirds of the seats in these 26 districts across four states, two thirds in these 26 aspirational districts, which are spread across four states, have gone to the BJP. And this again is not just my analysis, my data, election commission's data, all of us base it on election commission's data, is Indian Express, sir, which is written in this piece, which says, oh yes, 100, 100 percent, Manoj, come on. So, focus on women, focus on backwardness, focus on poor, focus on youth, focus on farmers, 
people understand this is a government and this is a leadership under Prime Minister Modi which delivers to the ground. And that is why they trust us. That's why they trust the PM. And that is the barossa with which we are bringing in these kind of ground level difference in the quality of life. So the last which I've been seeking your indulgence is to say quite a few honorable members spoke about Kerala and Tamil Nadu, unfair treatment on account of you know, perceived inequality and so on. I just want to highlight just five points. I won't go into details. The five points are, sir, we give so much, but we don't get. Doesn't add up. States receive 100% of the state GST. States receive 100% of the state GST collected in that state. Nobody touches it. Approximately 50% of the IGST, which is collected for the transaction between states, is given. Approximately 50 goes to the states. And 41% of the central government share of the GST, CGST, is also devolved to the states based on Finance Commission's recommendations. So tax devolution, which is suggested by the Finance Commission, tells very clearly that 100% of what you collect in GST is with you, 50% of the IGST goes to you, 41% of the central GST also goes to the states. One. Second, industrialized states like Tamil Nadu have very many companies which are registered there, but which have pan-India operations, and they have concurrent tax payments. Example, sir, Tamil Nadu is one of the leading automobile manufacturing state. We all know that. Manufacturers make profit because these automobiles are sold across India. So you pay the tax, you pay the tax, all of us pay the tax, and Similarly, plantations from Kerala make profit selling their products to all over India. This explains why location of direct tax collection may not be fair and equitable, may not be on the fair and equitable, because the money comes from everywhere, but the tax is paid in the state in which they are registered. So if automobile companies are registered in Sri Perambudur in Tamil Nadu and they pay their tax from there, it's not just that Tamil Nadu tax money is in it. All our tax money is in it. So when we say each state has, I've contributed this much, what have you given back? I want to say the tax is from all Indians, sir. Your company is registered there and you pay your tax. So let us think about it. Third, sir. Third, third, sir. Third, sir. Third, sir. Sir, there's a proverb in Tamil. I just half heard John Britta's. I'm tempted to say it, if you don't mind. Tadukula panja paila paime. Monaka Tamil Puriyum. Tadukula panja paila paime. Meaning? I raise an issue, and if you address that, I'll jump to the next. <laughs> There's no end. I'm sitting in a taduku, I raise issue about it, I answer that taduku related issue, but no, now I've gone to pi, answer that. I mean, come on, taduku la panja, pi la panja, dare kuno. So, <laughs> so, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'll still answer your cess and your surcharge. This is answered n number of times in this house. But n number of times it will always be raised like the other day, with your permission, I took a banter on uh, Honorable Member Yagnik, Ami Yagnik, on the waiver written off. Permanent debate. It's been explained till the cows reach home, but we'll still explain it. I'm quite... No, don't worry. Write off and written off are uh, grammatically different, that's all. So, that has been explained several times, sir, but I don't mind with your permission, I'll do it any number of times. Uh, sir, third. Ma'am, I think men agree more than women agree amongst themselves. <laughs> no, it's a reflection. 
हैव यू एवर एग्रीड विद मी सर सो थर्ड इज सर physical infrastructure such as roads rails ports airports are built by the center and expenditure on internal and external security is completely the centers so we have to make comparisons taking these point into consideration the last two points sir i'm just giving this as an example tax devolution made to kerala and tax devolution made to tamil nadu during the 14th 13th 14th and the 15th finance commission kerala sir when that is 32% devolution 13th finance commission had 33368 crores when i'm saying 13th finance commission its period was 2010-11 to 14-15 in that duration 33368 crores then when the 14th finance commission submitted its report and its reports uh, recommendation was accepted just as soon as prime minister modi took charge in 2014 and that 2014 report came into effect from 2015-16 to 2019-20 by that time because the recommendation of the 15th finance 14th finance commission was 42% will have to be devolved to the states so the 32 became 42 in the tax devolution 15th finance commission it became 41 because of jammu kashmir becoming union territory so 15th finance commission it is 41% and 15th finance commission term which is running now 2021 to 25 26 so i am reading the numbers for those three finance commission terms 33368 crore for the five year period 80188 crore for the 14th finance commission period 1 lakh 11000 11 lakh 1.11 lakh crore during the 15th finance commission 33368 8188 1.11 lakh crore now in the current period tamil nadu sir during the same time 70825 during the 13th finance commission's time 1.29 lakh crore during the 14th finance commission which ended in 2020 and during the 15th finance commission 2.36 lakh crore lakh crores just see the amount and where are we being told your money is not getting devolved you are getting the money sir then the last point sir the fifth one the credibility of this government sir is to financially empower the states can also be engaged from the fact that an issue which was pending from 1996-97 till 2014-15 happened nobody touched it that was actually money belonging to the states nobody touched it it was lying as a pending amount tax dues amounting to 81645 was lying there it was prime minister modi who in 2015 talking to the earlier uh, this happened in 2021 talking to the ministry to the officials to me all of us worked together with the states there was some money which the states owned the center this money was owned by the center to the states 81645 crores was then released reconciled the amount suggested the net net amount which went to the states was 43168 after adjusting what they owe the center so an issue pending from 1996 97 get sorted out in 2021 in favor of the states because prime minister modi was also a chief minister once and he knows what the states undergo in terms of money if it doesn't get reach them to reach them in time that is why since 2020 i am standing here as a evidence myself to say at least five times i have asked the ministry to release fund in advance 
So where they were supposed to get one installment, two installments have been paid in advance and not waiting for the due time so that the states don't suffer. So a chief minister becoming a prime minister has actually kept in favor of all the states and has never discriminated against any one state. In fact, he repeatedly says, until and unless all states <coughs> grow equally, India cannot grow. So somebody who believes in that is never going to dif uh, discriminate against any state. Sir, largely I've covered the issue, sir. I wouldn't go on to uh, talking about internet connectivity and issues like that which many members raised, but I suppose the concerned ministers would also have their time to speak about it. Thank you very much for giving me. Honorable members, it is already 5.30 p.m. <clears throat>